All right, so you may already be paranoid about storing your confidential data on your hard disk because you know that simply deleting it doesn't get rid of it. It's necessary to sanitize the disk to make sure that all traces of the data are erased. Today I'm going to explain to you why you should apply an extra level of scrutiny when you store confidential data on flash-based solid-state disks. So at the Non-Volatile Systems Laboratory at UC San Diego, uh, we've been working on uh, figuring out how to reliably erase solid-state disks. And this is work uh, I've done with my colleagues, Laura Grupp and Fred Spada, who's at the Center for Magnetic Research, Recording Research, and my advisor, Stephen Swanson. And um, this is work that we presented and published at the 2011 USENIX File and Stored Technologies Conference, or FAST, uh, back in February. And what we found was that the state of the art for erasing solid state disks, both the entire disk and the individual, and individual files on the disk were largely unreliable. What this means is that you could store data and apply the state of the art technologies to sanitize the disk and still have data left over, uh, leading to a very troubling false sense of security. <clears throat> Fortunately, all is not lost as we've developed new techniques and uh, procedures that could help reliably erase both um, entire disks and single files. So with that in mind, let's start. Or not. Okay, more technical difficulties. Okay. So when we want to sanitize a disk, what we're interested in getting rid of is confidential data. And confidential data is that data that we want to make sure is limited to, uh, that where access is limited to people who need access to the data, and uh, that the data is destroyed at the end of its life. Uh, you probably have confidential data on your uh, computer right now, uh, co commonly in the form of browser histories or uh, personal files. Um, Companies must protect their data, otherwise they might face uh, le both legal consequences and damage to their reputation, as we have seen recently. And governments must protect confidential data to protect the lives of its, uh, the lives of its citizens and the secrets of the state. So for the rest of this talk, we're going to focus on how to make sure uh, we destroy confidential data at the end of its useful life. And... Um, and hopefully that will um, help us uh, secure our confidential data. So what we know about sanitizing uh, disks comes from years and years of research on hard disks. Um, our colleagues at the Center for Medic Research uh, have been doing this for decades, and uh, we know how to sanitize hard disks pretty well, it seems. Solid-state disks, however, are a completely different beast. Uh, they use, um, it's next-generation storage that uses um, flash chips instead of, uh, in instead of uh, moving parts. Um, and it uses a complex controller we call the flash translation layer that will be responsible for a, lo a lot of the issues that we see with sanitization, as we'll see um, next. So SSDs are actually becoming quite popular. In fact, this chart from DRAM Exchange shows that we are seeing exponential growth in the use of SSDs, and we're seeing increased use in both enterprise and uh, database uh, and data center applications, um, to accelerate um, <clears throat> to accelerate data centers and also to um, improve reliability, enterprise reliability, reliability, especially with laptops. Um, and you might have left confidential data on a solid state disk like a USB drive and not even realized it. And if you don't really know, if you don't know where that SSD is right now, then uh, it's possible that even if you deleted the data, the data is still left on it and someone could recover it. So why is it so hard to erase data from uh, solid-state disks? Well, current sanitization tools are designed for hard disks, but SSDs are actually very different. Let's take a look at some of these differences. The first difference is that the recovery process of getting to raw data on SSD is actually very cheap. It costs a few hundred dollars to uh, pry the chips off of a SSD and uh, assemble a test rig that we built to pull the raw data off the flash chips on an SSD. To do the same thing on a hard drive would cost uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You'd have to buy a magnetic force microscope, and you might have to employ a physicist or someone who's familiar with magnetic recording technology in order to get to the raw data that uh, we could do for a few hundred dollars on an SSD. Uh, there are a lot of SSD manufacturers out there, and not only are there a lot of SSD manufacturers out there, there are different manufacturers for both the controller chips, uh, the entire SSD, and the underlying flash uh, 
So um, there's a very big space for somebody to mess up the implementation. Um, and it's very hard to know ahead of time what your particular SSD does under the covers. Uh, finally, it's very easy to disassemble and reassemble uh, an SSD. It just takes a screwdriver and a little bit of effort. Um, so all this translates into a very low cost of entry compared to hard drives in order to access the raw data. And this could translate into someone being able to steal your data. Someone could conceivably take out your, hard, or your SSD out of your laptop, uh, pull off the chips, read off all the data that you thought you had deleted, but uh, still there, and return the SSD back to normal um, all, all in a matter of a few hours. So now that I've hopefully motivated uh, the, um, the problem and got you a little bit concerned about storing data in SSDs, uh, let's talk about uh, sanitize, uh, what sanitization is and uh, what it means to sanitize a disk. After that, I'll talk about how uh, our lab built a, a system that allowed us to test what the state of the art was for uh, sanitizing SSDs and measure how effective uh, the state-of-the-art sanitization procedures were for uh, sanitizing the disk. Uh, and I'll, um, sorry, this is really focusing on. Sorry. And uh, I'll also talk about um, uh, an enhancement we made to sanitize single files. Hold on a second. So what is sanitization? Sanitization is erasing data so that it is difficult or impossible to recover. And the natural question that arises is, uh, what do we mean by difficult? Um, so for this talk, we're going to talk about making sure that nobody can ret retrieve data just by probing the raw pins of the uh, flash chips. And there's a reason for this. Um, there's lots of leftover data at this level already, um, even using current state-of-the-art technologies, and it's a very cheap to get to this point. The next level, which would involve uh, deep um, peeling off the layers of the chip in order to get to the individual flash gates responsible for storing the data, is a lot more complex, and we haven't seen anyone show, shown that yet. Um, but if you're interested, uh, our lab has published a technical report on uh, destroying flash memory-based storage devices, uh, physically destroying them. And uh, what we found was that you need to grind it, the chips down to 0 0.2 millimeters, and this grinding is good down to 2022. But we think we can do better than that for in this case. Okay, so back to sanitizing disks. Okay, let's take a look at um, the steps involved in writing data to an SSD, and hopefully this will help um, illustrate how data gets left over um, that, that the operating system can't see. So in a traditional hard disk, when you write to a single location, um, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the location that the operating system sees and the actual location you write to the hard disk. So uh, on the left, uh, or on the right, uh, on the left for you guys, um, we're writing a block of data that's highlighted blue, and as you can see, that location that the operating system sees is translated into the same location as you see in the hard disk. Uh, on the right, however, is the same process on a solid-state disk. The solid-state disk has, has a flash translation layer that's responsible for managing the idiosyncrasies uh, of writing to flash. So flash has some special properties that makes um, uh, managing it a little bit more difficult. So what the flash translation layer will do is it'll write basically to the first available uh, location on, on the physical media. And in addition to that, there's more space on the solid state disk um, than, than, on, um, than actually exposed to the operating system. So if you buy a 40 gigabyte SSD, for example, it might only expose 30 gigabytes to the operating system. So as you can see, uh, writing that same blue data on the SSD, what the FFTL does is it writes to the first available location, and um, this is going to cause problems, uh, as, you can see, as you'll see next. Um, so we're going to overwrite that same location with a different um, piece of data, this red data here. In the hard disk case, there's a one-to-one -one mapping, so we overwrite the next little bit of a or we overwrite that same location. 
But with a solid state disk, what we do is we write to the next available location again. And this is done for performance and flash management reasons uh, that I'll get to later in the talk. But as you can see, um, this causes the blue data to no longer be uh, accessible even though it's still on the, uh, on, the, on the solid state disk. And we call this data that can't be accessed by the operating system but still remains on the SSD uh, stale data. And it turns out that lots of stale data can be written to the drive over time. And uh, as we store more and more data and we overwrite and um, write new data, we create more and more of the stale data. And it turns out that it's impossible to know exactly how much stale data is on the drive because the flash translation layer is doing underlying management that the operating system cannot see. So now that we've uh, gone over what sanitization is and uh, how stale remnant data can be left over on an SSD. Uh, I'll go over how our lab uh, validated what the state of the art for uh, sanitizing SSDs um, and what we saw um, when we took a look at how well these state of the art mechanisms worked. So now we want to measure how much stale data is left over on the drive. Uh, in order to do that, first we constructed a fingerprint that we could easily identify. And this fingerprint had some special identifiers. It had a checksum to make sure that we were actually reading back what we wrote. And it had some unique patterns that would allow us to retrieve it and deconstruct it off the digital flash chips. Next, we needed a way to see more than what the operating system sees. So the operating, if, we take, if we took the drive, wrote some data to it, and read it back from the operating system, we'd only see the uh, top uh, view. But what we really wanted to see is the bottom view, which has all the stale and leftover data. So in order to do that, we decided to go about it the same way a data thief would do it. And that is, uh, that is peel off the chips and read the data off. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? So we built a custom hardware platform to extract data off the chips. And we used a, actually a hot air gun to just pull the chips off and read it. And we have a custom um, FPGA-based plat platform that we use for um, other experiments in our lab that allows us to bypass the FTL entirely and read the raw data off the flash chips. And our measure of success is that Drive successfully completed its sanitization if there is no stale data left over. Um, OK, so now let's take a look at um, sanitization, state-of-the-art sanitization procedures. Uh, and the first kind of sanitization procedure we're going to take a look at is uh, whole disk sanitization. Whole disk sanitization uh, erases the disk so that no data remains at all. Uh, there's two ways, two main ways to do this. The first is through built-in commands. Uh, there's the ATA security erase unit command that's commonly used, and this is a standard back from the ATA3 standard in 1995. Uh, there are also uh, several new and upcoming standards, but even the most recent drives we tested didn't have these new standards. Uh, for example, um, the ATA 8 standard defines a new sanitization procedure that's specifically targeted uh, to address the problems that I'm going to talk about next. Um, there's also a variety of cryptographic techniques that you can use, which I'll discuss later as well. Um, Finally, there's ways that you can erase the entire disk using uh, software overwriting techniques. And these software overwriting techniques are embodied in uh, various government standards, and there are several tools that you can use today to uh, apply them to disks. So let's take a look at these built-in commands first. The idea behind built-in commands is that the drive controller has the best idea of how to erase the underlying data in the disk. So we should let the drive controller do it and not have anything, not have the operating system do anything manually. And, and that's the idea behind ATA security erase unit. So ATA security erase unit is a standard defined in 1995 and there's two modes. Uh, there's a normal mode which basically overwrites the entire drive with zeros and ones. And there's an enhanced mode which says that all previously written user data should be overwritten. However, these, this command itself predates uh, SSDs. SSDs actually don't, don't have the ability to directly overwrite data. When you, when you write to a flash chip, um, in order to write to the, um, the, fla the same data address again, you have to perform an operation called an erase. So um, 
<clears throat> this command isn't perfect, but it's the only command that we uh, were able to, to test that was consistently implemented in many SSDs. So that's what we tested. So we tested several drives, and um, some drives supported the ATA security race unit command and passed. OK, that's a pretty good result. Uh, that is, we applied the command, and we read the chips, and we found no data left over. However, the security erase unit standard command had some drives which uh, failed, failed pretty miserably, actually. One drive reported that um, it was successful in executing command, and we were able to do pretty much everything, including remount the entire file system. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is really bad if you're, you know, in a data center and you're applying this, uh, you're using a tool to apply this command to hundreds of drives and each one of them reports successful and then you decide to sell your company's hard drives or SSDs on eBay, right? The, the data thief doesn't even have to do anything in this case. So we don't want that. And this is really troubling. Uh, other drives worked after we reset the drive. So basically the command would only execute after we either reprogram the firmware or just turn the drive on. So this is unfortunate, but at least it's not as uh, catastrophic failure as the first case. Um, uh, also, some drives performed something called a cryptographic scramble, so we couldn't actually know if uh, the sanitization procedure completed successfully, because when we read the disk back, all that was left is encrypted data. And I'll go over cryptographic, what cryptographic scramble uh, means in the next slide. So cryptographic scramble works by deleting the encryption key. So when you're writing to the drive, um, you're actively encrypting data that gets written. This is really fast, but encrypted data is still left over. And uh, when, when you perform the sanitization procedure, all that's deleted is the cryptographic key, so we, you could still recover encrypted data. And what's more troubling for us is that we can't actually verify that cryptographic scramble worked correctly because we don't really know where exactly the, the cryptographic encryption key is stored in the SSD. Um, so cryptographic encryption is great because, I mean, it makes it difficult um, to recover uh, data. And um, there's actually underlying reasons that drives, Im that drives implement it. And almost all the newer drives implement some form of encryption because it turns out that encryption is very good for scrambling data. And uh, when you write to an SSD and you want to even out where patterns, scrambling data is something that you ideally want to do. Um, so what we found, oh, yeah. So what we found was that, uh, so with hardware commands, what we find is that there is a wide variation in what the uh, in what actually happens when you execute the command. You can get anywhere between the drive not supporting the erase to a cryptographic scramble, to just a complete catastrophic failure, even though the standard def defines something that sounds specific. And you won't actually know what the drive does until you actually test it, which is troubling if you want to reliably erase solid state disks. So we proposed um, in a technical report a technique called scramble and finally erase, or save. Uh, and this is just a proposal. But um, what we propose is that crypt cryptography or actively encrypting your drive is desirable. It gets prevents the most uh, casual data thief from recovering your data. However, it's pretty much impossible to verify uh, that, your, uh, that, that the data is actually gone. Um, but a sanitized disk is very easy to verify. You just read it back, and if it's all zeros or all ones, then you know that there is no data left over. So uh, our proposal is to combine a cryptographic scramble with a secure erase, or with a Erase, uh, flash erase procedure. So the idea behind this is that the traditional sanitization process basically takes the disk from an active state to uh, initialized state immediately uh, after you sanitize it. When you do a cryptographic erase, what you do is you take it from an active state where it's actively encrypting the data you write, and then it erases the keys and puts it in a keyless state. Uh, and then you can initialize the drive and use it as normal. Our proposal is basically to add uh, two new states called, or 
one new state called verifiable. Um, and uh, in this technique, what you do is you first you scramble the, the disk uh, after it's done, uh, after uh, you <coughs> execute the sanitize process. And this step takes a few milliseconds. Um, the next step is that you perform a block erase and you erase all the data off the SSD. And this step could take a few minutes, but now we can actually verify that the SSD has successfully uh, completed erasing it because you can read back all, all the zeros and know that it actually erased everything. And this provides the best of both worlds because now we, we have active encryption on the drive and we can also verify that the drive is uh, already is completely erased. And we can do this by using the same techniques we use by pulling off the chips, or maybe future implementations of SSDs will have a way that you can directly read data. So, and, and again, this is the best of both worlds. But again, this is just a proposal. And uh, a common objection is to, to this idea is that it, flash takes a long time to erase. But it actually, flash takes um, not very long to erase. Um, to erase four gigabits worth of flash, it takes about 13 seconds. Uh, you can perform erases in parallel, and uh, the number of channels uh, that you have to, uh, flat, uh, to erase um, scales with the drive size. So a 250 gigabyte SSD should only take about 20 seconds to fully erase, as long as you're smart about it and you have fully optimized your erase pattern. So the problem is that we still have to trust the firmware to do it right, and we still want to avoid the need to rely on the firmware, and this is research we're still looking into. And again, what I just talked about, uh, SAFE, is just a proposal, but it seems that drive manufacturers might implement it. Uh, so in addition to hardware-based commands, there's also a software overwrite. So uh, this is embodied in various government standards, uh, and according to NIST, which is completely incorrect, um, studies today have shown that most of today's media can be effectively cleared by one overwrite, which is wrong. So you can actually, so there's a number of tools that you can use, such as I think a popular one is called DBAN, um, that will perform these overwrites. Um, so how these overwrites basically work on SSD is you take a, a, a SSD that's been written to already, and then you overwrite it with a single pattern. Um, of random data. So this is the green data in the bottom. And hopefully that green data will end up on places where data used to be. But you don't really know. And the idea is if you perform enough passes, either you'll end up in the situation on the left where all you have was the random data you just wrote on the drive, and, um, or you'll end up in the situation on the right where you just overwrote the same random data you wrote on the drive and the data that, uh, that was stale is still left on the drive which is the more troubling case. So we want to know exactly how many times do you need to override a drive to make sure that there is no data left. And our, our experiment showed that typically two times was enough to get rid of everything. But on the same drive, uh, the number of passes sometimes varied between two and 20. And uh, there are some that still have data left over after 20. So what we conclude from this test is that overriding a drive is unreliable. In fact, a lot of it depends on the past history of what you wrote on a drive, how many errors were created in the process of writing the drive, and it's just impossible to know what the, how many passes you're going to need to get rid of the drive, uh, get rid of the data on the drive. Okay, so now that we've moved past sanitizing the entire drive, we're gonna look, take a look at another angle on the problem, that is sanitizing single files, and this is actually the bigger problem. So what we want to do when we want to sanitize single files is we want to erase a single file but leave other parts of the disk intact. Um, and a common use case is when we have a confidential document that we want to get rid of, say uh, browser history or you know, a corporate document that we want to erase, but we want to keep our operating system intact. Um, so one way we could do this is we could just overwrite it. And in fact, this is the only way that the operating system can get rid of it without erasing the entire disk. And uh, we're gonna see the same results as overriding the entire disk as before. So in some cases, we might overwrite the most recent copy of the document, for example. But even after a few times, sorry, even after a few times, the, the documents might still remain on the disk if it's stuck in the unallocated space. 
So we, tr we wanted to measure how bad this was, and we tested with a one gigabyte file, and we tested a number of government standards. So you, what you see on the bottom is a government standard uh, is um, go our government standards that do anywhere between 35 uh, or one to 35 overwrites. And uh, all of the tests resulted in at least 10 megabytes of data left over uh, out of a one gigabyte file. And if this file was something like a video that's quite a number of frames, enough to discern at least what the video might have been about. So this is particularly troublesome. Uh, we tried to augment the procedures to do better. Uh, we tried wiping the free space, and we tried to defragment the disk and wipe it. And the idea behind that is maybe we'd get some more data out of the um, SSD. But that didn't actually do anything. So what we would like is a hardware command that would tell the controller to delete all the stale data. Uh, and that leads us to the next part of our talk, uh, our single file sanitization enhancement. So our single file sanitization enhancement is called scrubbing, and it's an enhancement oh, okay, to, to the FTL to sanitize single files. So it's not, as easily, it's not as easy as it seems. And to understand that, uh, we need to take a look at um, how uh, an FTL actually works. So let's take a look at how Flash works first. Flash is arranged into areas that we can write to called pages. And in addition, the pages are arranged into larger segments that we can actually erase called blocks. Sanitizing one piece of data would erase everything else in that block, which creates a problem if we want to sanitize the disk, or which creates a problem if we want to actually keep data and not lose it by accident. So, uh, one thing we could do is we could copy the important data out of the, out of the written flash block, but that's actually very slow. Uh, the other thing we can do is we could just go in directly and overwrite the individual pages that we want to get rid of. So we could go in and if we wanted to sanitize this red file, we could just go in and overwrite it like this. The problem is we need to program in order according to the data sheet. So our research found that it's actually okay to go in and just overwrite um, random pages in a flash chip as long as you follow certain restrictions. And we call this random overwriting a scrub. Um, and we found that in high reliability memory, um, you can do this as many times as you want. But in low reliability memory, um, our higher, low reliability, more dense memory called MLC memory, um, it turns out that um, there's a limit to how much you can do this. And we're limited by something called a scrub budget. So here's a graph of, of many chips that we tested, and uh, the y-axis is the bit error rate. So um, as you can see, some of these drives were able to exceed a certain bit error rate. <clears throat> Once the drives exceed a certain bit error rate, we basically have to copy uh, data out and refresh the, 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 the page, or the refresh the block. So, you know, I'm not pretty sure we don't have enough time to go over this whole thing. But um, let's take a look at how the scrubbing command can be implemented to improve uh, sanitizing a disk. So, scrubbing will allow us to get rid of the stale data by overriding it. And there's a, there's a policy decision on when we can do it, when we should do it. And we could either do it immediately in the background or when, when the drive is told to do it. And so the differences between immediate and background are merely performance, uh, performance and basically there isn't actually that much of a performance difference. And scan is what we wanted earlier. It's the, a command that will allow us to sanitize individual files by doing this uh, special page program that we found. Uh, but we still have to do this copy thing if, uh, we run, run over our, our scrub budget <coughs> for a lower reliability memory. And we found that our scan command actually is able to work with uh, minimal latency impact. In, in fact, the, the most latency we, we see is additional 10 seconds on a, a benchmark called swap space. Um, so scrubbing is a solution that we can use to sanitize single files. Uh, we could determine how uh, often we want to sanitize, and we can also sanitize on demand with a special mode called scan. So in conclusion, uh, sanitizing storage is uh, necessary for data security, but we need to verify that sanitization is effective in order to use it. Uh, the built-in mechanisms for sanitizing a drive are, 
reliable when they're implemented correctly. But the current standards allow a wide variation of implementation, and it's impossible to know ahead of time what implementation you have. Uh, hard drive-based techniques, such as overriding, don't necessarily work. In fact, it's possible to know if they'll work or not. Um, but our technique called SAFED will allow us to verify encrypted drives. Um, sanitizing single files in place is very difficult. Uh, software overriding can't actually guarantee that we can sanitize single files at all. But uh, our technique called scrubbing will allow us to sanitize single files by making some modifications to the flash translation layer. And uh, that's it. We have a, a few minutes for questions. If anyone would like to come up to the microphone. Uh, yes, there's actually been a study published on that uh, that, that shows that uh, it's actually not possible to recover data off uh, flash chips when you microwave them. However, um, they weren't actually able to show that the data was actually erased, just that they weren't that you couldn't actually use a flash chip after you microwave them. So uh, maybe some government agency would be able to figure out how to retrieve the data. <laughs> um, so the, uh, regarding the single file uh, huh. sanitization, currently there, are, there aren't any drives with the necessary firmware, like the FTL modifications. Or that, that's so, right. So right now, sanitizing a single file is pretty much not yeah, it's pretty much impossible to sanitize a single file reliably on current SSDs. Okay. Uh, it would be necessary to erase the entire disk if you were sure that your implementation correctly did that. Okay. Um, how about, um, if, so if you, even if, uh, say, I know there are um, OSs now like Lion and things like that where you, you can set up like a full disk encryption. Uh -huh. um, did you try, like, those, even if, so then if you're recovering bits from that, you're just going to be recovering encrypted files. Right. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so uh, what I mean, a few of the drives we did, we looked at did this built in, and uh, of course you only could recover encrypted data. But uh, if there's a flaw in your encryption technique, then you know, then your data is revealed. And in addition, it's not possible to verify uh, that your encryption actually worked very easily. Uh, Yes, so the trim command is uh, actually very interesting. Uh, if you look at how it's implemented in the specifications, uh, it's actually implemented as a hint. That means the drive actually doesn't have to do anything. Um, so that actually precludes it, using it reliably as a way to uh, sanitize this. Basically, it's just a performance enhancement. Um, the patterns used to overwrite um, data on magnetic disks, at least, were, you know, were were done. Were designed to prevent statistical analysis on the physical platters afterward. Um, is are there is there any uh, research that you know about f for for that in, in terms of flash? Uh, yeah. So we actually talked to uh, several vendor industry vendors uh, on what patterns would be ideal for sanitizing disk. And it turns out that um, pattern using pattern rates to erase is actually not very necessary on flash. Because Flash has a special erase command that basically program or increases the voltage levels to all the uh, of all the cells to a very high level, um, in most memories, it's a, it actually makes the distributions impossible to recover, at least from what they've seen. And in newer memories, uh, just programming it once and uh, erasing it again is uh, enough to make right. Make so it's, sure. it's pretty not pretty much not vulnerable to any kind of statistical yeah, attack. And then, yeah, and in, in okay. addition, it's pretty, uh, there aren't any publicly disclosed ways to uh, access the voltage level of the flash cells. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. I thought some of the issues that you described the flash translation layer, for example, not being able to access the blocks directly, <laughs> isn't that also an issue for regular hard drives? say, with a bad block relocation technology? Yeah, so, so it, it definitely is a, it, an existing issue with hard drives. Uh, the problem is, or the difference is, that hard drives don't do relocation as often. Um, if you look at the count uh, in smart monitors, you, look at, you see something like 30 blocks getting relocated. Um, SSDs have maybe 
10% of their capacity that, uh, possible, that can be possibly relocated at any given point in time. In addition, it's really easy to get to the uh, underlying data in SSD. Uh, it, it's actually pretty difficult to recover uh, data in the same way that we did on a modern hard drive, especially with uh, new technologies such as perpendicular recording that make it very difficult to recover the raw data. So. There's, there's, there's been an, uh, a bit of work over the past few years in uh, uh, rotating media, doing like uh, magnetic, some extreme magnetic analysis um, on uh, on hard disk platters. So, just um, using uh, even after you've overwritten it with marching patterns and you know really complex patterns and things, there's people have still been able to go back with uh, um, very sensitive magnetometers and and. Uh, uh, electron microscopes and being able to actually see, uh, still see patterns of data, um, and then from there being able to, you know, infer uh, what might not, maybe not actually read back the actual bits, but be able to infer sort of what might have been on there. Is there any, has there been any sort of work done on that with uh, with Flash? Uh, okay, so uh, uh, first regarding do, the hard drive. Do, do, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so first regarding the hard drives. Uh, yeah, you're right that people have done that. The, I just, uh, I don't think anyone's actually been able to recover an entire file using any of those techniques. Uh, but going back to the, the, the flash issue, um, the analog to doing that in flash would be to peel off the, um, the layers of the chip and to get to the, the, the actual flash gates that are responsible for storing that technology. And we have looked into um, how to do that with um, basically microscopic electron probes to read possibly data off uh, single cells, but um, to our knowledge, nobody has actually been able to do that or get remotely close to doing that yet. The, and it's, it's getting more and more difficult as um, process technologies get smaller and um, flash cells get more dense. Um, they're increasing from moving from one, uh, one bit per cell to two bits per cell to three bits per cell, so it's getting even more difficult to do that kind of recovery. So yeah, in short, no one's actually okay. done that yet. <laughs> okay, any more questions? All right, then. Thanks for having me.